हेलो व्यूवर्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ऑन टीसीपी हेडर फॉर्मेट इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो सेशंस दैट इज द प्रीवियस टू वीडियो सेशंस आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट ए पॉपुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर प्रोटोकॉल कॉल्ड यूडीपी द सर्विसेज प्रोवाइडेड बाय यूडीपी इज एक्सप्लेन इन वन सेशन एंड द हेडर्स फॉर्मेट इज एक्सप्लेन इन अनदर सेशन नाउ इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर प्रोटोकॉल्स द अनदर पॉपुलर प्रोटोकॉल इज द टीसीपी टीसीपी स्टैंड्स फॉर ट्रांसमिशन कंट्रोल Transmission Control Protocol. So, like any other protocol to learn, you always begin with what the packet format. As I said, the unit of transmission in general we call it as packet. But now you should have a habit of telling as segment for transmission control protocol. For UDP, it is user datagram, and for TCP, it is called as segment. so this segment or the packet is divided into two parts the header part and the data part the header is how much 20 to 40 bytes now in this 20 bytes so whatever 20 bytes are there that is completely about what the different fields in the header excluding the options so here you have what 20 to 40 bytes is including what if the header size is 40 bytes then it is it includes what it includes options also options are included it includes options also if the header size is 20 bytes that is the minimum value in the header then it will exclude the options part the last row you can just ignore if it is only 20 bytes now let us look at the different fields that are there in the tcp uh, format so to begin with the tcp here let me tell you about the first field here is given as the source port number the destination port number then you have the sequence number acknowledgement number like this there are different fields that are present here now if you compare the fields that are there in tcp with the fields that are there in udp you can see that there are more number of fields included in the tcp the reason is very uh, clear udp is a very simple protocol fine it is not supporting error control flow control congestion control hence all those fields related with those features will not be there in the header format here tcp is a protocol which is supporting error control flow control congestion control so it has got mechanisms for all these error control flow control and congestion control that's why the reason for having more number of fields in the header format let us see one by one the different fields here source port address destination port address so it is Uh, very much clear why we are having the source port address and any application program at the sender side will get a port number isn't it so this is what i have been explaining for the udp also the transport layer works in the client server paradigm so this is the client and this is the server so here this tcp ip protocol should at the transport at the client side tcp ip protocol should at the server side is in this manner so in this transport layer which takes the data from the application program the application program the process that is running at the application layer will have what an address and it is called as the port number so that is the source port number now this uh, application program is what is getting communicated with an application program that is running at the client side so definitely what if this becomes what the destination process and the destination process should have a port address so here you can see the different these are the two fields which will be there always for a transport layer protocol you have seen even for udp it was existing uh, source port address and destination port address you have the sequence number here and the acknowledgement number now these two fields which are called as sequence number and acknowledgement number it it the meaning for these two fields is like this see normally what is happening is the data that is getting transmitted from the Uh, so uh, sender to the receiver is in the form of what bytes so we can always say that okay a segment is there so we call it as a segment no the segment is consisting of what consisting of bytes the sender is the sender is what transmitting the data in the form of segments and each segments will have certain number of bytes the first byte number is called as the sequence number in any segment the first byte number is given as the sequence number and this will go to what to the destination this is the source 
client is the sender and server is the receiver. So, this stream of bytes which are traveling from the client to the server, all these bytes are uh, included in a segment. Segment is nothing but it is like a packet for any other protocol. So, suppose if 1000 bytes have to be included, so those 1000 bytes will get fitted into one segment. This is just one segment shown here. Like this, there will be several segments that will be traveling from the source to the sender. In that segment, the first byte number will be called, will, call, will be known as the sequence number. So, it is what? It is 32 bits are meant for the sequence number. Then you have the acknowledgement number. The acknowledgement is always coming from what? From the uh, receiver side towards what? Towards the sender side. If this is the sender and if this is the receiver, the acknowledgement comes for a segment from the receiver side to the sender side. Now, whatever is the sequence number, that means now let us take one example. For example, let us assume that this particular uh, byte number is 501, 502, 503, 504, 505, 506, 507. Just for the sake of simplicity, I have taken 7, seven uh, bytes in a segment and the first byte number is given as 501 and this 501 is also called as the sequence number. Now, if the receiver is receiving up till what up till the byte number 507 up till the byte number 507 the acknowledgement that comes from the receiver okay and which travels towards the sender will have is a acknowledgement number as 508 now you just see the relation here between 507 and 508 that means if the byte number is x the acknowledgement number will be x plus 1 so this is what is the field meant for the acknowledgement number Whatever are the segments that are sent to the receiver, the receiver will acknowledge, acknowledge that segment and it will send an acknowledgement number and that will be always what? 1 plus the last byte number received. 1 plus the last byte number received. So, I have given a simple example here. Hope it is clear to you all about the sequence number and the acknowledgement number. So, these are the, we can also say these are like numbering system in the uh, transmission control protocol. So, this is all about the sequence number and the what the acknowledgement number. Now, look at the different fields here. Header length is there. Header length always gives what it 4 bits are meant. So, in this case, if it is what 1 is minimum value is 20 and maximum is 40. Now, since may 4 bits are meant, the minimum value can always be in the header as 0, 0, 0 and the maximum will be 1, 1, 1. But the decimal value of 1, 1, 1 is 15, but you have an header side minimum of 20, isn't it? So, you cannot represent this, just 4 bits are not enough for you to show a value, to show a decimal value of 20. For that reason only, this header length is measured in terms of what? 4 byte words. So, whatever is the value here in the header length, it should get multiplied by 4. Suppose in the header length, if you are having a value as 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Now, this is in binary, the decimal value is 5 for this, you multiply by 4 and you will get what? 20 bytes. So, this is what is the header size of the TCP protocol. Suppose if you want to represent the maximum value in the header, maximum is 60 bytes. So, definitely in that case, the value of the header length in the field will be 111 and the decimal value for this is what? 15. When you multiply by 4, you will get what? 60. So, this is the maximum value of the header side. So, normally you can tell you can tell that in the header length, the minimum value will be 0, 1, 0, 1 and the maximum value will be 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Hope this concept is clear. Next, you have 6 bits reserved. After that, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 fields. Each field is a flag here. Okay. So, it will have only two possible values either 0 or 1 that means it is either set or reset, set or reset. So, any point of time if a segment is traveling from the sender to the source more than one of these flags will be set. Each one has got its own significance. So, why are we including these flag values? I will explain to you. There is, there is a field called as, uh, there is a flag called as URG. URG is urgent. The word urgent itself gives you a very clear indication, indication that 
the bytes has to flow immediately from the sender to the receiver. It is like the sender when it is sending a segment to the receiver, it will if the value for this urgent flag okay, is set to 1, you can see urgent flag if it is set to 1 and also I just wanted to tell you that here we have the urgent pointer. Okay. So, here there is some slight correction. This field is actually the window size and 16 bits are meant and this one is not window size, this is urgent pointer for which 16 bits are reserved. Now, urgent flag is related with urgent pointer. Urgent pointer consists of what? A number here. The, uh, the meaning for this is first of all the urgent flag will if it is set to 1, it indicates that the sender has to send that data immediately to the receiver. So, what do you mean by immediately? The sender is actually having a, now look here, this is the sender, this is the receiver, the sender is having what? A buffer. Now, whatever are the bytes that comes from the application layer to the transport layer are stored in the buffer. Once the buffer is full, the sender starts sending the segments to the transmission and to the receiver. But if the segment is having an urgent flag, okay, urgent flag bit set to 1 as well as some value here in the urgent pointer, it means that those bytes have to be immediately transferred. So, how this uh, receiver will interpret the urgent bytes is, suppose if always the urgent data is included in the beginning of the segment, if this is the segment, okay, if the segment carries the bytes, let us indicate that the segment is having so many bytes, but from here to here, only from here to here is what the bytes that have to be processed immediately by the receiver. We say those bytes are, are as called as urgent bytes. So, how to indicate up till here only are these urgent bytes? It is used, it, it can be indicated by placing the value in the urgent pointer. Suppose if the byte number, okay, if the segment starts from, uh, let us take 1200, the first byte number in the segment is 1200. If the urgent pointer field is having a value, if the urgent pointer is having a value as 200, just an example, then 1200 plus 200 is 1400. That means take this 1400 starting from the byte number 1200 to 1400 are the urgent bytes that has to get processed by the receiver, by the receiver and it has to be sent to the application layer process. So, that is the meaning for the urgent bit and the urgent pointer. The urgent pointer is valued only if there is an urgent flag set to 1. Now, uh, related after this urgent flag, let me explain you. That is why I have written urgent pointer is valid when, when this particular urgent pointer, uh, urgent pointer is valid if the urgent flag is set to 1 and you have ACK, okay. ACK is acknowledgement. Let me tell you these three flags ACK, SYN stands for synchronize, FIN stands for finish. These three flags you will get a clear idea once I start teaching you about the connection establishment, connection termination and data transfer phase of the transmission control protocol. Time being you can just uh, know that these three are related what FIN stands for finish, SYN for synchronize, a ACK is for acknowledgement. So, these three I will teach you when I am teaching you the uh, connection establishment, connection termination phases. After, in between this okay, you have PSH and you have RST. Even RST and PS, PSH, okay, fine, you can understand it is related to the data only. Data, PSH stands for push, request for push. You look here, it is request for push. So, what do you mean by request for push? Once again, I will give you the scenario here. If this is the sender, this is the receiver, the application layer at the sender is sending the data to the transport layer and the transport layer has to immediately send that information whatever it saves in the buffer. See normally what will happen is the data what it is receiving it is saving in the buffer here at the sender side. Now before even if the buffer once the buffer gets filled up it starts sending the data to the receiver. But here if the flag for uh, PSH is set, it indicates that whatever bytes are sent here to the sender, the sender should immediately send to the receiver. So, it is indicating like you push those bytes. Do not wait until the buffer gets filled up. 
now you have uh, RS, RST stands for reset, reset the connection. So, this also gets included here only the connection establishment and connection termination phases because TCP is a connection oriented protocol. It always what makes a establishment then it sends the data after that it terminates the connection. First it establishes the connection, sends the data and it terminates the connection. But in case if it is RST, RST stands for reset the connection, reset the connection can happen in three different situations. Whatever request is made from the client to the server, okay, it can be denied also, okay, that time we say there is a reset happening. Otherwise, the existing connection may get aborted, that is also a reset, okay, and you have one more, if the connection is idle, it can be reset. So, in all these three situations, the reset flag will be set here. So, this is all about the flags, then you have the window size. Window size is what, see, now the sender is having a buffer, here the buffer I am indicating with a circular array, each location is holding one byte. So, if whatever is the capacity of this buffer, okay, that particular size is sent from the sender side to the receiver. That means the, send, see, why we are saying that buffer, sender is also going to give uh, information about its buffer. Normally, we are saying that, okay, the client is making a request. That means, client is never sending data is what is our thinking. But remember, it is a duplex, okay, TCP is having what? A duplex type of communication. The sender and the receiver can send both at the same time. The sender can also send the data. The receiver can also send the data. The sender can also send the acknowledgement. The receiver can also send the acknowledgement. So, the sender will also when it is receiving data from the receiver side, the sender should also specify its capacity. That means now the sender knows that if this is my buffer in that how many locations are like empty, what uh, that many bytes it can receive from the receiver. So, that window size is in given by the uh, sender here. Similar way, even from the receiver side, if the uh, packet is coming, then it will also indicate its capacity of the buffer by in the window size. So, there we say receiver window size. So, this is what is the meaning for the window size. That means it is telling that my capacity is, suppose if the value here is, let us take for example, if the window size value specified is 15,000. So, it says that I can, I can receive data up till how much, what is the capacity? 15,000 bytes. It does not mean that all 15,000 should be included in one segment. You can have what a segment of 1000 bytes also. That means you are going to get how many segments here? 15 segments. Each segment carries how many bytes? 1000 bytes. Checksum, it, in the UDP protocol, whatever checksum functionality is there, the same functionality is included here also. There in UDP, the calculation for checksum is optional, whereas in TCP, it is mandatory. And also the checksum, same like UDP, it includes the header of TCP and the pseudo header. So, hope to make like, uh, hope you people remember about why the pseudo header is also included in checksum calculation. If you are not able to recall, please refer to my uh, previous video, there were, uh, one of my previous video wherein I have explained about the uh, UDP header format. In there, in that header format, I have uh, clearly explained why pseudo header is included in the checksum calculation. Similarly, here also TCP will also include what? The header part as well as the pseudo header. So, pseudo header mainly consists of the source IP address and the destination IP address. Uh, please refer that video to know uh, things in detail here. I will just tell you very briefly. It also takes care that the packet reaches the correct destination because it assumes that if the destination IP address in the IP header gets corrupted, then it may reach the wrong host. Even though all the fields of this TCP header are right, but still if it is going to the wrong host, then there is no meaning. That is the reason it always includes the pseudo header part also in the checksum calculation. The rest is what the options and padding are up to 40 bytes. So, this is all about the different fields that are present in the TCP header. Hope the explanation is clear to you all. Bye-bye. Take care.